The three friends traveled for days, across many different types of terrain and through all kinds of weather, such as sun, rain, and even snow. The trip seemed to take ages until they finally reached the outskirts of the ever-free forest. Well, this is it, guys. The ever-free forest. Ponyville should be just beyond these trees. You know, I've heard some horror stories about this place. Like what? You two do know what an Ursa Major is, right? Of course we do. It's supposedly a giant bear made up of stars that's said to be bigger than a mountain. Oh, yes. I remember when that unicorn magician came to Merheim one time and kept bragging about how she used her magic to defeat one. I thought we agreed never to speak of that again. Sorry. Don't look at me. I've been trying to keep myself distracted so I'd forget that day. <sighs> you and me both. Speaking of which, Mesmo, that reminds me. Before we left Merheim, you mentioned something about an evil witch living in the Upper Free Force. What do you know about her? Not much. Just some various rumors. Like what? Well, there are some stories of her cooking ponies in a big cauldron pot. Others say she can put a curse on anyone who comes near her. Anything else? Just that she speaks only in rhyme. Really? Wow, that must be hard to do. Especially when rhyming with orange. Well, let's hope we don't run into her. Or anything else that happens to be living in there. Let's go. The three friends ventured through the Everfree Forest, a dark and mysterious forest just as they imagined it would be. Its very interior seemed to expand much more ground, and with so many paths to take, it seemed to baffle the trio. And having known the stories of monsters and enchanted plants that inhabit the forest, they were ever so cautious and kept a close eye along every tree and bush they passed along the way. You know what, I think you two are reading too much into this whole Witch of Everfree thing. Oh? What makes you say that? It just seems like the classic formula for an old wives' tale. Mysterious figure in the woods, eats children, puts curses on victims. The only original thing about it is the speaking and rhymes thing. This coming from a guy who believes in Mothmen. Hey, there's scientific evidence to back up their existence, and they're more closely related to nocturnal birds than moths. Then wouldn't that make them owl men? <laughs> Ah! What? What is it? Something just burst against my leg! Calm down, it's just a raccoon. Oh, just a raccoon? Just a raccoon? Dude, that thing could have bitten me and given me rabies or something! Well, it didn't. Anyway, Lan, the reason why they don't call them Owlman is because there is already a cryptid referred to as an Owlman. Whatever you say, Nicola. Masmo, are you alright? I don't like this place. It's like the farther we go in, the darker it gets. Uh, hey, Nicola, you wouldn't happen to have any spare night vision goggles, would ya? Sorry, Mess. Mine are the only ones I brought. Besides, you're a wizard. Don't you have a spell that can light our way or something? Wizard in training. But, yeah, I do, actually. Illuminati Verga! Ah, much better. Well, that's one thing I can do right. Mesmo moved his baton around to help him and his friends see. Unbeknownst to them, the lights seemed to attract the attention of a creature in the shadows that followed them while trying not to be seen. As they looked around the path, they noticed a shiny, fleshy mass slither away into the bushes. Ah! What was that? Probably just a snake. Kind of looked like a python, I think. <sighs> What's the matter? I don't like snakes. Not one bee. Really? But they're designed to keep the rodent population under control. I don't care. I still hate them. <laughs> Did you hear that? You mean that yipping sound? I heard it. And I don't like it. Where did it come from? Leave this place of gloom, or you will face your doom. Now do you believe me about a witch living in this forest? Um... Coincidence? What's a coincidence? Are you kidding me? Who's out there? If this is a trick, I assure you it isn't funny. Show yourself! Just then, something else began to move around the brush. The shiny, fleshy mass from before that seemed to slide around on the ground. Suddenly, a monstrous creature rose up from behind Leon. It was a tall and slender being with bright red eyes and vertical yellow pupils. The creature let out a sharp hiss. Leanne, behind you! 
Liying quickly spun around and delivered a powerful kick that knocked the creature into a tree. Revealed in the light, the creature could be clearly seen. It appeared to be humanoid, but with many snake-like features, including shiny yellow scales, reptilian eyes, fangs, and a long snake tail that it had in place of legs. A naga? Why did it have to be a naga? I've heard of those things before. They say they used to be the terrors of the ancient world. Uh, Nicola, this is all very fascinating, but maybe you can skip the history lesson and get to the part on how to- Oh, I don't know, STOP ONE! Well, they're reptiles, so the code should be effective, since reptiles are cold-blooded and all. Cold, got it. Luckily, I happen to know a cold spell. Well, here it goes. Glacier Sanders Snifrunch! The cold spell was just about to hit when the Naga slithered out of the way, only for the tip of its tail to freeze. Dang it! It dodged the spell! Nagas were said to be very clever. Just then, the Naga slithered out of the bushes and engaged Leon again. But this time, she was ready and fought the beast with everything she had. Throwing hits, punches, chops, nearly everything her training had to offer. But the Naga was too quick for her and kept evading her blows. Ugh, stand still, you slimy, disgusting thing! Man, what does it take to beat this overgrown sidewinder? I don't know, but it's too fast to fight. I'm not sure if we can even outrun it. Just then, a small brown ball flew out of the bushes and landed in between Lian and the Naga. The ball then burst into a cloud of blue dust that covered up nearly everything in sight. <coughs> no, what? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm feeling a little... a little... Uh. As the dust settled, the Naga was seen on the ground, coiled up into a sleeping position, as was Lian and Nicola. A sleeping powder, huh? Well, I guess that's one way of stopping Naga. Guys! Guys, come on! Wake up! Now's not the time to take a nap! They'll be out for some time. Letting that creature hurt her friend would have been a real crime. <gasps> okay, witch. I know you're on here somewhere. If you think you can cook my friends and I for dinner, then you've got another thing coming! Just then, a small, four-legged creature stepped out of the bushes and walked up to Mesmo. It appeared to be a zebra wearing golden bracelets around her ankles and rings around her neck. Her mane was done up in a sharp-looking mohawk, and she bore a tribal sun-shaped mark on her flank. I am no witch. I am Zakora, resident of the Forest of Everfree. Now, just who might you be? A zebra? In this part of the world? <sighs> well, at least it's not a witch. <clears throat> uh, I'm Mesmo from the Kingdom of Merheim. My friends and I were on our way to Ponyville when that thing jumped us. Naga attacks can cause quite a wrinkle, but are easily managed with the pollen of the Von Winkle. Is there any way to wake my friends up? We really need to get going. You can wake them by washing off the pollen or with smelling salt. But the fact they got too close was their own fault. Washing off. That I can do. One quick shower coming up. Nano precipitous. Just then, two small rain clouds appeared over Nicola and Liam and began to pour rain down on top of them. As the rain continued, they both began to stir and awaken. <sighs> what happened? I had an interesting dream. It gave me inspiration for a new kind of tool I'd like to make. Why am I all wet? Zakora here used a sleeping powder to take down that Naga. Unfortunately, you guys got hit with it too. The zebra? Yeah, yeah, I know. Just go with it. Did you know the thing was going to attack us? A Naga's favorite treat is human flesh. Especially when it's nice and fresh. Yeesh. Good thing you came in to help us. Can we get out of here now? Let's. Your friend of the East seems to have the strength of a beast. That's Leanne for you. Don't know how she does it. By the way, how is it easy for you to rhyme like that? I've never questioned it, my dear boy, but I must admit it does bring me some joy. Works for me. All right, let's get back on the trail. Thanks again, Sakura. Bye! Not a problem, my new friend. Let's hope this isn't where our paths end. A while later, the three friends had finally gotten out of the Everfree Forest. They were greeted with bright sunlight that hurt their eyes for a moment, since they had gotten used to the dark forest. Ah, <sighs> good old sunlight. Uh, a little too bright for me. I think I see Ponyville. 
It's right over there. Just on the horizon was a small town with bright and vivid colors, as well as various buildings to catch their attention. The travelers had finally reached their destination, Ponyville. Hey, what do you know? We made it! Wow, sure is colorful. But the colors are very well blended, very aesthetically pleasing. Well, come on, let's go check it out! A little while later, the three friends had entered the bustling town of Ponyville. It was a strange sight for the ponies to see three humans walking around. For some had never seen humans before, the three themselves felt a bit awkward walking into a place inhabited by talking ponies. I've never felt like such a pariah before. They're just not used to humans. It was like that for my family when we first moved to Mannheim. Well, I've never seen ponies that live in houses before. Or for that matter, talk. It's kind of awkward. Maybe if you talked to one of them, you'd feel better. You think so? Better than just wandering around aimlessly. Well, I do need to know where I'll be staying. But which pony do we ask? Well, I'm sure we'll find someone. What the... Hands? Can I help you? Fingers? Yes, humans have hands. Now, can I have mine back, please? So dexterous. Are you okay? Are you... <laughs> well, that was... unusual. I really hope the rest of them aren't like that. Oh, that's a pretty one. All right, let me give this one a shot. <clears throat> Hello there. <coughs> okay, are all the ponies here just completely insane, or is it just me? Nicola watched as a brown earth pony stallion with an hourglass on his flank ran into an alley and suddenly walked out another alley on the opposite side of the street. Something does seem to be off about this town. Maybe we should ask someone else? Someone not obsessed with hands or runs away when someone says hello? I'm afraid the next pony we ask might blow up or something. It's better than searching the entire town for just one pony ourselves. Okay, fine. But I choose the next pony. Hmm. Ah, that one! The purple ones with the flowers on her flank? Yep. Wish me luck. Uh, um, excuse me, ma'am? Sorry to bother you, but my friends and I are new in town and we're trying to find someone. Well, I think I might help. Who are you looking for? Well, she's a unicorn pony. I don't know what she looks like, but I do know that she's a student of Princess Celestia. Oh, you're looking for Twilight Sparkle then. I know where you can find her. Really? Where? She resides in the library past the town square. You can't miss it. It's a large treehouse. Okay, thanks! Oh, uh, I'm Mesmo, by the way. Nice to meet you, Mesmo. I'm Cheerilee, the local school teacher. A pleasure, Miss Cheerilee. Well, I gotta go. Thanks again. Not a problem. I hope you enjoy your stay here. Guys, I gotta lead on where our pony is. Come on! To the library! A little while later, Mesmo and his friends had arrived at a large tree with green leaves, windows on each spot of the tree, balconies on three different floor levels, one with a telescope, a front door with a candle insignia, and a sign in front with a picture of a book on it. This was the library. So, this is the library, huh? A rather peculiar spot for it. Seems to have been built in the hollow portions of the tree. Sure does remind me of home. Well, are we going to just stand around, or are we going to see if she's here? Why are you knocking? It's a library, isn't it? Well, we don't want to be rude and barge in if she is home. Good point. The door opened, and there in the doorway stood a lavender-colored unicorn mare with a moderate sapphire blue, moderate violet, and brilliant rose-colored mane and tail, along with a pix-pointed cutie mark on her flank. Oh, hello. Can I help you? Are you... Twilight Sparkle? Uh, yes. What can I do for you? May I come in? Oh, certainly. Your friends may come in as well. Thank you. Yes, thank you. It is hot out today. Most appreciated. So, what are you three here for, exactly? You're not surprised to see three humans enter your library? Well, I've done my research on humans before, though I've never seen one in real life. What brings you to Ponyville? Oh, sorry. <clears throat> I'm Mesmo. Mesmo A. Mandrake. I'm a wizard in training from the Kingdom of Merheim. These are my friends, Lian Hu and Nicola Thomason. Hello. Greetings. 
Well, it's nice to meet you all. I would introduce myself, but it seems that you already know who I am. Yeah, about that. You see, the reason we're here is because... Um, well... It's kinda hard to explain. I'm sure it's not that hard to tell me. I have time. Well... Say hello to your new apprentice! What? what? You heard him. I... I don't understand. What exactly do you mean? Well, my king and queen told me that I am to study under your tutelage in order to become a better wizard. Your king and queen? Yes, King Nathaniel and Queen Marilyn of Merheim. I see. But I don't understand why I wasn't told about this sooner. Spike! Just then, a small baby dragon with purple scales and green spikes came walking down the stairs, covering his ears with his hands. Uh, not so loud, Twilight! Oh, baby dragon, how cute! Easy, Lan. Spike, how come I didn't get a message from Princess Celestia? I don't know. My stomach's been feeling weird all week. Uh, Twilight? What are those? Homo sapiens, or humans in layman's terms. And what are they doing here? Well, they came here from Merheim, for reasons that I don't even know about. Like what? Well, I'm her new student. Huh? How come we didn't hear it? <laughs> um, that feels much better. Did he just burp up a scroll? Ew. It's from the princess. From last week! How come we didn't get it sooner? Indigestion, maybe? Look, Twilight, you have to teach me magic. Otherwise, I can't go home. What? Yeah, you see, back home in Merheim, I'm sort of a bumbler. Sometimes I can't get my magic right, and that causes trouble. Lots of trouble. My king sent me here so that I could be a better wizard under your tutelage. And I can't come home until I am. And this was all Princess Celestia's idea. I don't know about this. I never thought about teaching anyone magic. I'm still a student myself. Plus, this is just so sudden. I don't know what to do. Neither do I, but I don't want to never see my home or friends again. I've traveled hundreds of miles through rain, sleet, and snow, climbed mountains, and was almost killed by a man-eating naga in every forest just to find you. Please, Twilight. You're my only hope. <sighs> well, I suppose I can try. Really? I'll do everything I can to teach you all you need to know. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! All right, all right! Now, how about I give you a tour of your new home? That'd be great! How about it, guys? Oh, yeah, sure. Of course. All right, then. Follow me. Later on, Mesmo and his friends had exited the library with Twilight and began exploring the whole of Ponyville. Their first stop was Sweet Apple Acres Apple Orchard, where Twilight not only hoped to meet up with her friend Applejack, but also to pick up some apples for her and her new friends. Sweet Apple Acres. Hmm. Seems like a nice place. Look at all the apple trees. This is my friend Applejack's farm. She and her family have been working the land here for generations. They're the best apple farmers around. Is that a fact? Well, only one way to find out. <coughs> wow! You weren't kidding, twice. This is delicious! Y'all planning on paying for that? Huh? There, behind Mesmo, stood an orange pony mare with a blonde mane and tail, freckles, and a brown cowboy hat. Her flank bared a cutie mark of three red apples. I said, y'all planning on paying for that apple? Oh, uh... It's alright, Applejack. He's with me. Really? And you are? I'm Mesmo. I just arrived this morning. And these are my friends, Leon and Nicola. Alright, it's nice to meet y'all, to be honest. I've never met a human before, let alone three. Well, I've never met a pony that could talk before, let alone a whole town full. So I guess we're even. As for that apple my friend ate, I hope this covers it. Land sakes! Is this real gold? Yes, I am from a noble family. We are quite wealthy. Well, this should cover it nicely. Much obliged, ma'am. <laughs> You're quite welcome. I've got to say, Applejack, your family's apples taste way better than the ones back home. Well, that's years of tradition, and the Apple family's special brand of farming. Well, it was nice seeing you, Applejack, but I've got to show Mesmo and his friends the rest of Ponyville. Nice meeting you, Applejack. See you later. Nice to meet y'all, too. Don't be strangers now. A little while later, Twilight, Mesmo, and his friends arrived at a small building that looked like it was made out of gingerbread, peppermint, muffins, and white frosting. 
This was Sugar Cube Corner, the local confectionery. This is Sugar Cube Corner. Here you can get all kinds of baked goods. It's also a nice little hangout for me and my friends. Looks like the house straight out of Hansel and Gretel. Well, it is a bakery. True, and I do feel like some red velvet cake right about now. I could go for some donuts myself. Then let's go inside and see what Mr. and Mrs. Cake made today. The group went inside the confectionery, where many other ponies were seen eating the baked goods that were available such as cakes, cookies, and donuts. Over at one of the tables were two ponies in particular. One was a blue pegasus with a wild, unkept rainbow mane and tail, along with a rainbow lightning cutie mark on her flank. The other was the same pink earth pony Mesmo and his friends encountered earlier. Nice place. They do try to keep it clean, despite Pinkie Pie. Who's Pinkie Pie? Oh! Look, Dash, it's those things I was telling you about! Hey, you're that crazy pony who freaked out earlier when all I did was say hello! I've just never seen creatures like you before! What are you? Do you have names? Is it really hard to stand on two legs? Do you like parties? Uh, in order, we're humans, my name's Mesmo, not really, and yeah! You must be Pinkie Pie. Mm-hmm. My full name is Pinkie Mina Diane Pie, but every pony just calls me Pinkie Pie. Maybe because it's easier and more fun to say. Say, you're all new in town, aren't ya? That explains why I've never seen you around before. <gasps> that means you haven't had your welcoming party yet. Don't worry, I'll find one right away. Um, how much sugar has she had lately? No, I'm Pinkie Pie. A lot. And you are? Rainbow Dash. I know, I'm awesome. Not to mention humble. That too. Whatever that means. Nice to meet you, Rainbow Dash. Nice to meet you, too. So, you're humans, huh? I've seen your kind before, but never this close up. Let me guess, you just arrived this morning? Not only that, but he's also here to learn magic from me. Really? Then you've got the right unicorn for the job. Oh, <laughs> Dash, stop it. Although I do know a bit of magic already. Then why do you need Twilight to give you lessons? I'll show you. Ventus Tibia! Don't you never ask! Wow. I can see why you need her help. Looks like I have my work cut out for me. I have other spells that need improving, but I'd rather not show you unless you want to be accidentally turned into a newt or something. No thanks. Maybe we should just get on with the tour. Good idea. Nice meeting you, Rainbow Dash. Oh, and uh, tell Pinky it was nice meeting her too. See you later, dudes! Enjoy the rest of Ponyville! Moments later, Twilight, Mesmo, and his friends stood outside a large store, a design of which was reminiscent of a carousel. This was Carousel Boutique, a local dressmaking shop. This is Carousel Boutique. It's a dress shop owned by my friend Rarity. Whoa, 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 wait. Is this the same Rarity that was featured in an article of Clothes Horse magazine? The same Rarity that designed outfits for Sapphire Shores, the Pony of Pop? The one and the same. Leon, aren't you wearing one of her outfits right now? Oh, yes. In fact, I have many of her outfits back home. They're all commissioned by my mother for me. Well then, let's go meet her. The group soon went inside where a white unicorn mare with a curved purple mane and tail, along with three diamonds for a cutie mark, was seen sewing a new gown with an electric sewing machine. Hey, Rarity! Twilight! How unexpected! What brings you here? Who are your new friends? Wait a minute. Is that one of my designs? Oh, yes it is. My mother had them commissioned for me along with a few others. Oh, so you're a daughter of Chi Hu. I must say, your mother is one of my best customers. So very generous. She does love to buy gifts for others. Ahem. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just so surprised to see one of my more unusual dresses being worn. I never did human outfits before her mother asked me to work with her. Anyway, my name is Rarity. Mesmo, wizard in training from Merheim. Merheim? Really? You know about Merheim? Oh, I know a lot about Merheim. Such a wonderful kingdom. The glamour, the sophistication, the shops, the people. Next to Canterlot is the most magnificent city in all of Equestria. <sighs> so... Why are you here in Ponyville? I'm here to train under Twilight in order to be a better wizard. King and Queen's orders. Well, if that's the case, then you couldn't ask for a better teacher. Rarity, I don't need my ego inflated. Oh, but it's true. Maybe. Do you know if there are any houses for sale around here, Rarity? Not that I know of, but I'm sure if you just look around, you'll find one. Thanks. Come on, I want to see the rest of this town. 
Okay, okay, we will. Oh, but do come back. I could fix up that vest for you. I'm noticing a lot of... Are those oil stains? Axle grease, actually. I see. Sounds like you're in a very messy line of work. Nicola here's an inventor. Oh, what have you invented? Well, I've been working on a way for one to be able to use the energy found in lightning in everyday life. That sounds kind of dangerous. Well, sometimes you just have to take risks. Works for a lot of other great inventors. Well, good luck with that and try to get too badly hurt. I make no promises. So, where to next on our tour? How about the park? I think Fluttershy said something about getting that family of ducks in the fountain to move to the pond. Lead the way, then. Nice meeting, Rarity. Don't be a stranger now. And Leanne, I look forward to working for your family again. Likewise. Later, the group had arrived at the park, where they saw a yellow Pegasus mare with a family of ducks. She had a silky pink mane and tail, along with three pink butterflies for a cutie mark. You'll see. The pond will have way more space for you to paddle around in. You and your ducklings will be much happier. Yee! Oh, you are so adorable! Huh? Oh, dear. <laughs> Leanne, stop! You're hurting her! Huh? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, oh, I am so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I just never seen a Pegasus as beautiful as you before. Oh, why, thank you. Fluttershy, this is Mesmo and his friends, Nicola and Leanne. They're humans. Nice to meet you, Fluttershy. Um, nice to meet you. Are you okay? <laughs> Must be shy. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. You don't have to be afraid of me. I know what it's like meeting new people. It's kind of scary. But I bet you and I could be good friends. Of course, I do understand if you want your space. Really? You understand? Of course. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll try. That a girl. So, I hear you like animals. Well, I have a cat myself. Maybe you'd like to see him sometime? That sounds nice. Um, I am very sorry about earlier. I really didn't mean to hurt you. It's just that sometimes I just lose control. I hear that one guy's still recovering from the last time. It's okay, and thank you for calling me beautiful. No one I know has ever called me beautiful. Well, except for my mother. Oh. So what's with the waterfowl? Fluttershy has a certain way of communicating with animals. These ducks tried to make their home in the fountain, so I'm moving them to the pond where they'll have more space. Well, that's thoughtful. Speaking of which, Fluttershy, do you know if there are any houses for sale around here? I need to find a place to live. Well, I heard about a cottage on the north end of town. That might be available for rent. Great, thanks! Twilight, can we go there next? Hmm, I don't see why not. After all, you do need a place of your own here in Ponyville. Fantastic! A while later, Twilight, Mesmo, Nicola, and Leon were at the cottage Fluttershy told them about, which was available for rent. Twilight was with the landlord out in front, while Mesmo was exploring the inside. The landlord was a large brown stallion with a chestnut-colored mane and tail, along with a house for his cutie mark. Just then, Mesmo came back out and looked at the landlord. Well, Mr. Mandrake, what do you think? Well, Mr. Shelter, it's big, spacious, has a nice upstairs, and the color's not bad either. I'll take it! Wonderful! Congratulations, Mesmo! So, how much do you charge for rent? 325 bits a month. What? That's outrageous! Look, for a thousand square feet, it's practically a steal. I don't have that kind of money on me! Well, you better figure this out, because I'm not budging. Look, Mesbo, why not see about getting a job here in Ponyville to help pay for the rent? But I need the house now! Getting a job will take forever! Unless... Look into my eyes. Why? Look! All right, fine. I don't see what's so special. You are now under my control. Mesmo, the Magnificent, commands you. You will let me stay in your cottage for free until I am able to get a job and pay for the rent. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Good. Now, when I snap my fingers, you will come out of your trance. And... Awaken! Flovenurse! Huh? Oh, oh. Uh, pleasure doing business with you. Shame on you, Mesmo. You promised you wouldn't do that ever again. I'm sorry, Liam, but I was desperate. 
but don't worry, he'll be fine. All I do is buy myself some time so I can find a job and be able to pay the rent. Until the spell wears off of Mrs. Shelter, I get to live here for free. <sighs> well, at least promise you'll keep the new place clean and follow the lease agreement. Of course I will. I'm just glad there weren't any side effects this time. What kind of side effects exactly? <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, those kind of side effects. Later that night, Nicola and Leon were getting ready to sleep out in the cart filled with Mesmo's things, while Mesmo was dressed in a pair of navy blue pajamas and a nightcap, getting ready to sleep in Twilight's guest bed. I hope you don't mind using the guest bed tonight. I haven't thought this out since the slumber party I had a while back. There's no trouble, Twilight. Tomorrow my friends and I will move all my stuff into my new cottage, I promise. Anyway, thanks for letting me stay here for the night. Not a problem. Oh, by the way, Pinkie Pie wants to throw you a welcoming party at your new place. Just a fair warning, if it's anything like the one she threw me, it's going to be packed. Thanks for the warning. <sighs> Good night, Twilight. Good night. So, weird place so far, huh? A little. But once you run its ponies, you get used to it. And this place has some amazing ponies so far. Even one that can communicate with animals. But not like you, though. Well, if that's the case, I'm sure we'll have a better conversation than the other animals she takes care of. Just don't say anything yet. You don't want to scare anyone. Um, or any pony. All right, all right. But it's only a matter of time before someone finds out. Yeah, well, good night, buddy. <sighs> Good night, Mezzy. Soon enough, Mesmo lay down on the bed and drifted off to sleep, with Salem doing the same in his lap.